Someone is stealing identities. Here's your relook at the NECA Toys, Friday 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning, Roy Burns. Still haunted by his past, Tommy Jarvis, who as a child killed Jason Voorhees, wonders if the serial killer is connected to a series of brutal murders occurring in and around a secluded halfway house where he now lives. Come on, Roy, get your hands dirty. Before we get a closer look at Roy Burns, the imposter Jason, first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall the figure stands. Yes, I, yes, I know. I have reviewed this figure before, but I have received several requests to go back and re-review this guy again, something I was more than happy to oblige. Me reviewing a Jason figure? Twist my rubber arm. So like I said, before we get a closer look at Roy Burns, the first thing we're going to want to do is, yes, in fact, figure out how tall the figure stands. By that, I'm going to take the tape measure right to the very top of his head. By that, I'm going to regurgitate to you, the viewing audience, that Roy Burns does, in fact, stand 7.7 .7 inches in height. Quickly switching that over to centimeters, the figure stands almost 20 centimeters, 19.6 centimeters to be exact. And helpful, I'm sure, it would be to compare Roy Burns with perhaps some of the other Jason Voorhees figures that NECA Toys have put out. And again, twist my rubber arm. Let's bring in a couple of those right now. Here he is next to the Part 3 3D Jason Voorhees. One thing that is different with the comparisons this go around is that I'm actually comparing Roy Burns with the reissue Jason Voorhees that have come out to stores recently. Well, not super recently, but they definitely have much better paint schemes than those original Jason Voorhees that I did the comparisons with before. Part 3, 3D, Jason Voorhees, to your left. To your right is the Part 4, Final Chapter, Jason Voorhees. And again, that reissue paint scheme. And for also fun, we can bring in the Dream Sequence, Jason Voorhees, that actually came out before Roy Burns. Sort of the first Jason, really, from Part 5 that NECA Toys had put out, which was really basically just a reissue, reusing the same mold parts that we got with both 3 and Part 4 before. Now, Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning, stands out as one of my personal favorites from the franchise. Sort of tossed it back and forth, actually, between that, 4 and 6. 4, 5, and 6 are basically my favorite of the Fridays, and then between those movies, they sort of take turns every once in a while. But I will say that Part 5 definitely has the most notable deaths, if you ask me, at least. Having a look at the accessories, I think NECA Toys pretty much covers off all the territory when it comes to the things that Roy uses to kill his victims in the film. Starting early into the film, starting first with the accessory of the road flare. Now this flare, as you can see, is sculpted in what I'm guessing to be white plastic. And then from there, they've gone in and painted all the accented areas, like the top and the red, for example. And then like the smoke, the part that comes out from the flare, has been rather, rather handled effectively by doing a little bit of gray, a little bit of almost this salmon pink color. And like I said, giving you a pretty effective looking flare. Of course, in the movie, Vinny is the one that gets the road flare to his mouth. And again, that starts the movie's pacing rather nicely with a really gr gruesome and really interesting looking death. This can fit easily into Roy's hands. In fact, actually, all the accessories fit rather easily into his hand. Just take his flare and just twist and get it lodged in between his fingers and his palm. Moving from there, why don't we have a look at perhaps the shears? One of my other favorite deaths from the movie. Killing, of course, Tina. The shears going down and then clipping her eyes. Again, it's a really nice looking accessory. You don't see shears often thrown in with a Jason Voorhees figure, and notably you wouldn't anyways, but it's nice to see that they would have actually thrown this in with Roy, because I think it's, it's like it's one of my favorite deaths from the movie. It does have some really nice kind of dark gunmetal silver and then all the blood, actually, one thing I've noticed with all the accessories for Roy is that the blood is really rather dark, assuming that this is probably something that has then dried up. It's not fresh blood, after all. This stuff is nice and dry. He's used the weapons, used the tools he found around him, and then just discarded it for someone else to find later. The shears actually are serviceable in the sense that they do actually open and close. And unlike the retro cloth Roy that sadly didn't have a swappable hand and really didn't have the necessary means to be able to hold both shears in hand, this Roy actually does come with a swappable hand. In fact, actually, let's put the shear down for a second. Mind if I just remove the road flare? Okay, thank you. I'm going to remove that. 
And this hand right here is currently just flat. It doesn't serve so much of a purpose. I mean, it's just a, a flat palm. But we're going to go ahead and just twist that off, remove it from the socket. And uh, you'll see behind the peg is left. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and change it out with the gripping hand. And just wiggle that back into place, just like that. Uh, I will say, though, with Roy, it's a little bit more trickier to get the hands actually in place because you'll see the length of the sleeve almost goes to the point where the peg is. I mean, it doesn't give you very much wiggle space to work with. Anyways, we're going to go again, just twist that back in place. Spending a little bit more time putting that hand in the sleeve than I really wanted, but at least the hand is in place. Let's go back and resume to taking the shears. We can fit them into his hand. Now, granted, you could either have them facing this way, or if you've seen the movie, you'll probably know that Roy actually dispenses Tina by leaning over top of her and rooting the blades of this shears actually into her eyes before closing these shut. So really, I'd like to display Roy personally when it comes to these with them upside down. And you can really display them either way, this way or this way, but I like to have them so that they're angled forward. And then from there, all you're really going to do is take one handle. You already know where this is going. Take the one handle, fit it into his hand conveniently, easily, and then go ahead and just do the exact same thing on the other side. At least the width of the shears, when opened, allow you for spacing to put him into his hand. And then from there, you can just kind of bring the arms up, depending on how you want to have them displayed. For the longest of time, speaking of displayed, this was the way I had actually this Roy displayed. It's really by far my favorite of the accessories that come included with the figure. Not to really diminish all the other things that come with Roy, but by far, this is my favorite of the things that come included with the figure. I guess really, if we want to follow the order of deaths in the film, we'll probably want to follow up with Eddie's death, which will involve using the belt tourniquet. Definitely a gruesome death scene in the movie. It's kind of strange the way he wraps the belt around Eddie's face and then manages still to get it attached to that stick while Eddie is just literally standing there. But at least they include it, and I'm so glad that they did. It's basically just a soft plastic, and then you can see there's the rings on both sides. It doesn't have any blood on it, though in the film it does get quite a generous amount of blood on it as it's twisting against his face, specifically around his eyes. At least what they did do, they included a stick or rather larger log, I guess. And then from there, you can just take the rings and fit them on both sides. It's one of those instances, of course, when it comes to displaying with the figure that you really don't have a tree and you certainly don't have Eddie. So it seems a bit strange for him just to be carrying around a, a piece of log with, of course, the belt wrapped around it. But at least again, I appreciate the fact that NECA Toys would include it with the figure. And it is a super nice detailed piece. Moving on to come also include with the figure, I guess we could kind of look at the machete. Uh, we're kind of just breaking up the order a little bit here, but he does come include with the machete. It's a really dark color crimson that they use for the red. It's almost kind of got a slight tint of black, but it is a nice looking machete. It's got the nice silver blade. And again, it's got the little rivet points there in the handle where you can imagine that this is the way that the machete was put together. I guess while we're also talking about sharp things, Roy also comes included with the smaller hunting knife. I may have said at the beginning of this review that all the blood looked like it was old and aged. I guess the knife is probably one of the freshest looking applications of blood. In fact, it actually still has like a slight clear look to it. In fact, like Roy has just used it. The blade does have, again, that nice silver coloring. The red is also a nice touch on the end. And again, you've got, got a wood grain in this case with the hunting knife. It kind of breaks it up and looks a little bit different from the rest of the accessories. Moving along, he also comes included with a cleaver. Which really, for me, I would either display him with either the shears or the cleaver. Because I just kind of think Roy with the cleaver. I don't ever really picture him, think of him with a machete. Cleaver is really the way to go. I think Ethel and Jake both get it with the cleaver. Again, it's got some nice silver fi finish with a nice additional wash of red. I probably would probably just jump back and forth between the shears and the cleaver as my two favorite accessories that come included with the figure. He also comes included with a stake. Slightly smaller accessory to be looking at. It's got a much darker, uh, dar darker gunmetal gray finish done to it. I don't actually think that this is molded in this color. I think it was actually molded in a different plastic and then they just painted over top of it. I could be incorrect by that. And the last thing to come include with Roy, before of course we have a closer look at the figure, is the rather large spear. 
should have not had those enchiladas. Uh, again, it looks like maybe it is molded all in that dark gray plastic. Generally, you don't get plastic this color. Not that I'm somebody that manufactures toys for a living. But it's certainly a nice little accompanying piece. Short of just not having the porta potty for this to be speared through. It's a nice included piece to come include with the figure. A lot of accessories to cover off, I know. NECA are notorious in a good way of throwing everything but the kitchen sink when it comes to the releases of Jason Voorhees figures. Not quite looking at Jason, but certainly the next best thing. Let's now get a closer look at Roy Burns. You know, Roy Burns was my favorite of the Jason Voorhees figures NECA toys have put out, up to the point of recently looking at the reissue part for Jason, which I think now is my favorite Jason. Of course, this is all leading up to the eventual release of the Part 7 Jason, which I know continues to sadly get delayed. you got to believe that there's a reasoning why it was delayed, and I think most of it is probably legalities of things still tied up with the, the ownership of the rights of the movie. So eventually, I know, we, we are going to get that Part 7 Jason. I'm super excited. I, you know my feelings when it comes to Jason Voorhees figures, but let's not diminish anything about Roy Burns. Now po possibly my second favorite of the Jasons that NECA have put out. It is really a nice looking figure. For starters, obviously, you can see that he's wearing the hockey mask with different placed chevrons, both in different placement, different colors. It's also one of my favorite masks as well, just because it breaks that traditional look of Jason Voorhees with the chevron in the middle and those smaller ones on the sides. Of course, the mask is removable. The straps are different, like in the movie. They're more elasticized straps, though these aren't elastic, they're just done in molded plastic. On the back, you can see there's the bald cap, closer trying to resemble, Roy Burns was trying to resemble the Jason Voorhees look by using the bald cap. Obviously, you guys are going to want to see what it looks like underneath the mask. It seems like they probably have used a darker color of plastic and then washed over top of it more of this eggshell, almost this eggshell yellow. You can see that there's brush strokes on it, and that's not necessarily a negative thing either. It does add a little bit of contrast when it looks when we look at the paint, the paint applications done to the mask itself. Anyways, I'm sure you guys are going to want to see it removed. So let's go ahead and just lift the mask off. And underneath, we've got Roy Burns. Sporting, of course, that bald cap. Not really the most effective reveal at the end of the movie, because when by the time he lands on those spikes at the bottom of the ground and they look down on him, between the rain and the angle, it was really hard to place who exactly it was. So even when they looked down in shock and surprise, I was still the first time watching the movie and thinking, I don't know who that is until it was revealed later. I do think the head sculpt for Roy looks really good. Not likely going to be the way I'm going to display it, because of course I will want to put the mask over top of it. But I like the fact that they did actually give you an actual Roy mask, under, Roy face underneath that. The bold cap around his face is made of two different colors. Sort of this lighter color beige and then a more darker color pink around it. It's also get that also around the areas of his ears as well. Sort of a little bit of a speckling when it comes to the paint applications, especially when you see it around his cheeks. But all in all, a real effective looking head sculpt, even though likely this isn't going to be the way I'm going to display the figure. I will say certainly it's leaps and bounds better than the original Retro Cloth Roy, then eventually I will want to go and re-review again. I mean, for a first outing Roy, it did the, do the job well enough, but certainly leaps and bounds better is this one right here. Anyways, let's go ahead and put the mask back onto his head. It's easy really if you put the mask on forward first, and then just kind of follow it up on the back there. Just kind of get everything situated. You still see a little bit of a gap on the side. So you will want to just bring that mask down just a little bit. But you'll still see a little bit there peeking out from either side there. Really nice looking head sculpt. As for the rest of his body, not only does his mask change in the movie, but also the outfit that he wears instead of a shirt and pants. Roy instead sports coveralls. A debatable topic of color, really, in the movie, because some say it was blue, some say it was green. Some others may say it's closer to being like a like a forced teal, even though they really don't see a lot of teal in the forest. But definitely is a more combination of blues and greens, though very similar to actually the Halloween franchise. The way it's lit is so dark that you don't really get a true understanding of the color in the movie. But it is closer to kind of being this kind of forced greenish blue. It does have a sheen to it, so it kind of looks like rain has settled on it. It's not a dry-looking coverall at all. He does also have the little punctured marks on the front, with some additional red get added in there as well. And they've actually 
kind of added a little bit of red around it too. And I like that. Like the blood has started seeping into his costume. It's an un unavoidable, certainly, problem with Jason Voorhees' figures is that he does have what some have coined to be his diapers, like this lower half of his body where it's slightly more rubbery plastic. I mean, I don't really, I'm not bothered by the fact he does have that because it conceals the joints. It's either this or it's having a case where you have visible joints on the figure. And I'd rather prefer getting those, quote, rubber diapers if it means actually at least that you're covering off the joints. Again, when we look at the rest of the figure, for the most part, all the rest of it doesn't have any blood or anything on it. I guess they probably could have thrown a few little splatters and drops of blood somewhere on the figure's body, other than the few puncture marks that, of course, are his own blood on the front of his costume. And last and certainly not least, we'll have a look at his footwear here. Footwear seems to be the only thing that's dry on this figure. If I'm assuming that the rest of his costume has been soaked in, in rain, his footwear actually is rather dry. His shoes rather dry. He does have peggles on the undersides of his feet like all the other Jason Voorhees figures have. So again, if you want to put him in some dynamic poses, you can certainly pull that off on Roy. Or if you just want to have him standing there looking menacing, he's rather effective at doing that as well. Tackling now the articulation on Roy. His head is on a ball joint, so he can technically rotate his head all the way around. Don't kid yourself though, there is a human underneath this. It's not a zombie like Jason, so twisting his head around would basically just kill him. I guess he's dead anyways, really. But the head does move up, it does move down, and you can have it pivot back and forth. I was like displaying Roy like that as well. As for his arms, his arms hinge out. They're a little on the tighter side, and you can really only pull off effectively about a 45 degree angle, simply just because of this, the molding on the top of his shoulder here. But about a 45 degree angle is what you get from his shoulders. Of course, yes, yeah, so you can rotate his arms all the way around as well. He has a double hinge on the elbow, so there's one hinge there, one hinge there. Same on both sides, actually. And you can double bend the elbow that way. Whatever hand you decide to display him with, you can rotate hands back and forth, but the sleeve, admittingly, does get a little in the way of things. You try your best to try to rotate it back and forth this way, and then you're basically just hitting sleeve, and then you're hitting sleeve again. Roy doesn't have any articulation, though this whole body feels, at least this part of it, is all, again, that softer, rubbery plastic. The diaper everybody keeps talking about. So he doesn't technically have any articulation here. It's just basically an overcoat of soft rubbery plastic. The legs, however, effectively split out. You want to have him doing the splits. It's a little strange doing that, I know. You can move the legs forward and back. Sometimes, though, when you are rotating Roy's legs, I find this figure above all the other Jasons sometimes gets notorious for his thigh getting caught underneath the diaper or where the diaper sort of sort of gets tucked in there. You have to sometimes take like a smaller tool and just kind of fish it back out. Anyways, he does have the bend at the knee. You can rotate the lower leg. And Roy's foot has the articulation back and forth. You can also hinge it up and down this way. And to some extent, you can rotate it all the way around, although it's going to have the same hang up that he does have with his hands, hitting those sleeves after all. A great looking figure. Again, an opportunity now on my part to be able to go back and re-review this guy again, kind of add a little bit of commentary that I didn't have initially added to that first figure review. Uh, still, changes made also to my personal favorite Jason. Originally, for the longest of times, Roy Burns was my favorite Jason that NECA Toys have put out. Since that last review, though, my new favorite Jason is the reissue part four. I love the color scheme. I love the damage done to his mask. So it slightly dethrones Roy. And I hate to say I... Probably will have Roy even dethroned again down to the bronze when we eventually get the release of the Part 7, New Blood Jason, which I'm super excited about. The Friday 13th Part 5, A New Beginning, Roy Burns, may no longer be the gold in my collection. It's been dropped a slot by the Friday 13th Part 4 reissue Jason Voorhees. I do have to stress that it's the reissue part that I love about that figure. That paint scheme that NECA applied to the mask of Part 4 Jason definitely makes my top slot, which then drops Roy down to the silver, and silver's not bad. And I think making then the bronze is probably the Friday 13th Part 5 dream sequence Jason Voorhees. I love the slick, wet look of that figure, sort of a prelude perhaps to a Friday 13th Part 8 Jason, not to mention he does have swappable heads and a whole lot of them. Those are my top three favorite Jason Voorhees right now. Right now, I have to say, because of course... When the Friday 13th Part 7 Jason Voorhees comes out from New Blood, it's eventually going to come out. We know sooner or later it's going to come. I know it's probably going to take the top slot. I mean, who are we kidding? It's probably going to be my number one, and then all of those are going to have to be kind of re-sorted out. Roy's probably still going to make my number two, I think. Maybe, I don't know, maybe my second or third. Maybe I might change my mind between him and the Part 4 reissue. 
Nonetheless, though, Roy Burns does things differently both in the movie and in the figure. In the figure, you're certainly getting a different mold altogether using a coverall similar to what we would see with the Halloween 2 Michael Myers. Though the pockets are a little bit different, the legs and the arms, I think, are about the same. You also get yourself a brand new different mask, different head sculpt, certainly underneath, showcasing Roy, which, again, at the end of the movie, do we even know that's Roy Burns? It's just some guy sticking on spikes. It's not until after the fact that we know it's Roy Burns. But if you didn't say that after the death, I probably would have still looked at him and thought, I, I, I don't know who this guy is. Anybody know who? Do you know who this guy is? Uh, yeah, okay, I, I'm not the only one. I don't I don't know who the, who he is. Friday the 13th Part 5 definitely has some of the best deaths in all of the entire franchise. And I know some people would just simply look at Part 5 like they would look at Part 3 and say, oh, Jason Voorhees isn't in the movie and therefore we don't have to like it. No, you do like it because it is definitely one of the more entertaining Friday the 13th. It's not my favorite anymore. Again, I change my mind frequently. I think Part 6 is now my favorite. But sort of think of this for yourself. If it wasn't part for Part 5... We really wouldn't have a Jason Lives. We would just have another Friday the 13th. By having Roy being the slip-in imposter for Part 5, do we then appreciate Jason Voorhees coming back for Jason Lives? Which, again, is my favorite of the franchise right now. It's going to change, but like right now, at this moment, that's my favorite Friday the 13th. What's your favorite Friday the 13th movie? Let me know down below. And perhaps as well, what's your top three favorite Jason Voorhees figures that NECA Toys have put out? I was like reading your comments down below. Also, if you guys are new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, loved also the fact that we're going back and having a look at Friday 13th Part 5, a new beginning, Roy Burns, leading up to the eventual release of Part 7. It's going to happen. It's going to ha just keep telling yourselves it's going to happen this year. I hope. Fingers crossed. Certainly, though, like I said, if you guys are new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, turn the bell notification on, and then, yeah, come back to this channel regularly, because not only are we going to be looking at some more horror figure reviews, but there's definitely going to be a lot more NECA reviews also lined up and coming your way. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.